Oh, thank you. <laughs> Hi, this is Fiona here from Metal Planet Music, and I am joined today at Hard Rock Hell with the fabulous Rusty from Electric Mary. Good evening, or morning, depending on where you are. Okay. Welcome to Hard Rock Hell. Thank you very much. Glad to be here for the third time. God, it must be it's like a second home for you then at this stage. Yes, second home. Yes. <laughs> it's my first visit here, so you'd actually be able to show me the ropes. So. Right. Yes. Yeah, but we've never played this before. We've been in uh, Portali in Wales okay. the last two times. So, yeah, this is the first for us. So we worked out where our caravan arrangement was, so that was the most important thing. Yes. And how to turn the heater on. Ah, uh, yes. And now we're happy. <laughs> and how do you all find it? I mean, like you are in the middle of a very hectic tour. Mm. Um, this is show five, I think, from 20. Um, and then we're going to have four days off in a couple of days. So it's going to be fine. But yeah, there's a bit of driving. But you know what? In Australia, we drive a lot. Yeah. We yeah. drive a lot. In Australia. Australia's a big country. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But with not many people. But uh, yeah. Because. Okay, um, you played a gig with Skid Row uh, very few weeks ago. Not yet. Oh, what, what date is yeah, that? Yeah, that's, that's uh, in Italy, yeah. around the 22nd maybe of November. Wow, that's going to be interesting. It'll be very fun. Yeah, we'll be coming from Marseille and driving to Italy and doing a show. And I feel like there's another band on Holland. There is another. I thought, but I thought I saw the notification when you posted it, announcing it as well. So I mean, that is really going to be something to look forward to. Yeah. Well, we've never been to Italy, and mm -hmm. you know, obviously, we've never played with um, Skid Row either. So mm -hmm. yeah, we're looking forward to it. And you've a new drummer. Yeah. As well, so he's been thrown right into this big tour, uh, playing with Skid Row and Hard Rock Hell. Uh, yeah, and he's whining right now. <laughs> oh, me back, me back. Yeah. Actually, he's got tennis elbow. Well, he's a drummer. <laughs> yeah, but you don't want to have it now. You want to have it when you're not on tour. He's all right. Though. No, he's he's great. Spider's great. This is um, he's been in the band for about four years now, and um, yeah, he's he's he brings an uh, not, he's musically slightly different than us, and he comes from another place, mm -hmm. which is great for us because it now takes us to another place within that classic rock genre that we live in. Okay. So I suppose it's a nice way to leave in like your new album is Mother yep. and that's what you're touring at the moment. So um, so you're looking at going maybe in different directions and things like that. So how no, does all of that work? Yeah, not, not, not necessarily. What, what was different for this record though is um, there was more band interaction and, and we did uh, pre-production was a whole band instead of just me and Pete yeah and um, you know that worked way better and then the end result is better for us so so what then was your, your inspiration I suppose for this album uh, you know I was just saying that to um, our guitarist before when songwriting there is no inspiration really for me i just pick up guitar and if something comes out it comes out and if it doesn't it doesn't bother me i don't actually sit down to to write music i just play a guitar and then if something comes something comes yeah. so with this in mind tell me about your single um it's all right, all right. because is that the opposite aspect of what you've just said to an extent it's all right. Um, about three years ago, I suffered from depression and anxiety, and um, so when this song came, it, it just came out. I just picked up a guitar, and I was just uh, saying, "It's all right, it's all right," and I just felt like I was saying something. Sometimes, sometimes I will play and write. A, a line will come out, and I'll go, "Oh my God, I like that. What am I saying?" So I try and look inside to say why I said that, why did I say that line on this particular day, you know, doing that. And It's All Right is a very positive song. It's not, not a down song at all. And um, it's, it's enjoying a, a bit of success in Australia because it's a quite a big depression, it's quite a big thing around probably the world anyway. But yeah, so it's a very positive song about a, a darker um, subject. But a friend of mine who uh, runs a um, 
I can't think of any say now, but he's suffered. He's a, a big sportsman in Australia. Okay. But he has a catchphrase. Um, he has a catchphrase which I've forgotten right now. No, reset and thrive. Okay, that's yeah. good. So you know, you may know somebody who you're talking to who is down. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you ask how they're going and they go, yeah, yeah I'm doing okay. But that's not when they're doing okay. They're not doing okay. But when, if you're able to reset and thrive and push through that stuff, yeah. And do you find like in the, in the music industry that um, there may be more reluctance to admit to suffering from depression or anxiety? Of course, because you, you know, if, if you're, the only way to do music is to have an ego, because you wouldn't hop on stage, you wouldn't be able to. Mm. How else would you get on a stage and sing in front of people if you didn't have an ego? Yeah. So your ego also stops you from telling people, oh yeah, I'm not, I'm actually no good. Yeah, it was a friend of mine in a totally different field, in the sporting field, who <coughs> kept asking me, are you all right? Are you all right? And then one day I just said to him, actually I'm not. Because... I started thinking about why he was asking me was I alright. Mm. It was, I don't know if it was a look on my face all the time or, because I like to be a bit cheerful, you know, make fun of people and that in a lovely way. <laughs> and maybe I'd stop doing it and he could see the difference and, make, you know, I didn't know. Yeah, so. I, I, there was a time there where <clears throat> I'd go to a, a store and walk to the door and do a U-turn and not go in. And then I went to the doctors because I thought, <coughs> that's not right. Why would I go to a store and not go inside it? Well, what? That's madness. Anyway, our song, It's Alright, came from there. That was a long and deep answer to a question which, which is a serious thing around the world. Well, if it's because of people like you who are in the limelight need to be able to highlight that and um, society is now changing their attitude towards mental illness and uh, stress and anxiety and because you're in such a high profile position and there's expectations, the demands then on your, on your health yeah. as well could be enormous. Yeah, true. Well, the, we cancelled the last tour because I got sick. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, but what <coughs> are you saying? Pardon? Here you are. Yes. Yeah, bigger, badder, stronger. Yeah. Tons more attitude. I've reset and thrive. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to tonight. Tonight's going to be great. It, it's going to be, it's definitely different. Yeah. And I think there, you will enjoy it. I think there's going to be a lot of energy about yeah. the place. So you'll be able to feed off that as well. And um, there's great band etiquette here because all the bands are supporting each other too. Yeah. You know, they're helping out and cheering yeah. in the crowds. You know. And we're on just before Reef too, which I haven't seen for a long time, so I'm looking forward to that. Okay, they're closing. Okay. Okay. And we're the band on before them. Oh, nice one. Yeah, that's nice what I said. Are you going to think, there was a song that I listened to um, today, it's um, Sorry Baby. Yep. And I listened to your acoustic. Mm -hmm. and your vocals on that were just yeah. sublime and it was so passionate. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a bit about that song? <laughs> Will this get back to my first wife? Maybe the seventh <laughs> eighth, but you'll be fine. <laughs> um, sorry Baby is just, um, it's really a, a, an accumulation of um, oh, you know, it is personal. It's a personal song for me. Um, it's a relationship thing that I'm still holding on to a little bit. That's from a long time ago. It's more than 20 years ago now. So, um, you know, when I say I'm sorry, but I'm sorry for you, not for me. So, um, yeah. The, the version you would have seen has a different middle section though. Okay. Mm. And the reason from the record, less? because when we were when we were doing pre-production, for me it wasn't working. Mm -hmm. It was like it doesn't sound like that when I played on acoustic guitar, and that sometimes happened when you put a band to something. <laughs> so um, we just started mucking around, and I think it was Alex played a wrong chord, and I went, 
what was that? Oh, sorry, sorry. He said, no, 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 no. And I called to the engineer, can you just rewind that? And he played a D, I think it was, and I just went, yes, that's where we're going now. And it was so good. And when I get to that bit, I actually cried on that song, recording that song, because Brett's leading back in after the middle section, to me, was that good. I call it proper song. For me, Sorry Babe, Sorry Babe is a proper song. Like, if I was in another band, I would look at that song and go, oh, I wish I wrote that. That may sound a little egotistical, but I don't mean it to be in that way. I love all our songs, but there are certain songs, and I'm sure it's the case for every band, that you gravitate towards, you know. And Sorry Baby is one. And we'll be playing it tonight. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah, be because with the, the different middle section. With the different middle section. Okay, I think we have a fire alarm going off. I'm not on fire, you're not on fire. Well, maybe we are.